Hello everyone, it's Alibon here once again and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the book Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. This book was originally written in 1923, so Claude Hopkins was way ahead of his time uh, with the advice and uh, well, the teachings that we got from this book as well, uh, but still it's all very relevant today. Uh, so the book's a total of 20,420 words uh, and it's advertising genius. Like, I mean, this is the man that popularized toothbrushing. Like something that's so just normal, but this is the guy that started to popularize it through advertising as well. Uh, but he truly is a genius. And as I said before, the material is still very relevant today. So let's get right into it. For these top three takeaways, starting with number one, psychology of advertising. So psychology of advertising, you know, you must learn through measurement of your advertising what effects, uh, what effects lead to what reactions. So he really made a big strong point of this, that when advertising, you need to be able to measure the result, you need to be able to see, okay, how much is it costing you to gain this? And then you have to either reduce the cost of gaining a new customer, uh, or you need to change your advertising until it brings in more revenue, it sells more things. Uh, he mentions that curiosity is one of the strongest human incentives. Uh, for example, puffed grains. Right? Puffed grains initially, when this was a thing, this was a failure. Like people did not like this. The, this was just being thrown out. It wasn't going to work. But now think today how many cereals you know of, breakfast cereals that you know of, that use a puffed grain. Puffed grains are used daily. But curiosity... And if you can use curiosity in your advertising uh, to your advantage, it's the strongest incentive. That's what he says. Uh, and cheapness as well. Cheapness is not strong. Is not a strong appeal to people. And remember, this is a guy that's saying this in 1923, that cheapness is not strong appeal, because cheap. You have the qualities of it being, you know, it's not going to last long, it's no good, etc., etc. Uh, people want to feel like they can afford anything. So instead of using the using cheapness, uh, find a way to use more value in your advertisements as well. Uh, a unique guarantee also. So guarantees already at that time uh, with mail-in brochures and everything was already a big thing. Uh, so he mentions about you know, making your guarantee unique as well. Uh, he shows a comparison of a person selling a horse. Uh, and this person selling a horse was one person saying that, you know, it, you pay, pay for it, and then if you don't like it, come back within seven days and I'll give you a refund. And then he gave the example of the other person selling the same horse, but instead, instead that person said, take the horse and then pay me in seven days. Of course, he chose the one where it would be take the horse, then pay me afterwards though as well. But uh, I thought that was a great example too. And selling something that many people sell. Make your offer unique or different by adding something to it as well. So if what you're selling or advertising is sold by lots of people, the market's saturated, he says add something to it to make the offer unique. Uh, so today you see that a lot with informational products as well. Uh, informational products that go with, uh, maybe it's a supplement, an informational product that goes with a hair product. Uh, adding in these video courses that come with this when you order that as well, giving more value and making it unique. Uh, but that was top takeaway number one, psychology of advertising. Now number two, art and advertising. And uh, now art and advertising, we're basically talking about pictures uh, as well. Like the pictures sh that you see in advertising should only be used if they help you sell more. Uh, the pictures are not there to entertain someone, amuse someone. You know, you're helping people spend their money. You're not a clown. You're not there for amusement, right? Uh, now, only use a picture as well, if it builds a better selling argument than what you could type to, in, in that space. 
So really think about that because you see this quite often now as well, where uh, pictures and visuals are getting more and more extravagant today, especially on the internet as well. And a lot of the time, you really should be thinking now, okay, could I write that better than what that picture could show it? as well, when you're thinking about the space that the advertisement's taking up. As it's something that I found very unique about that, it, because I had not thought of that before, it's something very simple, but uh, something that is extremely effective too. Uh, and then going from that, it's takeaway number three, that is information. So for an ad writing agency to become successful, you should they should have a library of books on every line that requires research. Uh, so this could mean that you're researching dental, medical, scientific, uh, scientific articles, uh, philosophy, uh, you know, b uh, business references. You're going out and you're doing research studies as well. You're contacting multiple companies, uh, but that information and gathering it, because it could just take one or two things even though it might take you a month to write that two line ad, it might just be one or two things that you've learned that helps you put that ad together that then helps that business sell hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars uh, as well. He gives another great example too. Uh, like before, uh, before advertising a food product, 130 men were employed for a week to interview all classes of customers for that food product as well. Uh, it's, it's again, building that information. So making sure you spend some time to really research that area and understand it before you start writing the ad. Uh, so that way you're not starting from a totally blank slate as well. Uh, and he goes on to mention that the, the people paying for your advertising are going to, are going to obviously pay you more and more times over and they are going to come back to you uh, because you've shown that you actually understand their field that you're writing for as well. Now that was top tip number three. Now this book's a really short book, only 60 pages, so I highly recommend uh, to give it a good read through as well. Uh, or if you just want to gather specific information from it too, uh, you know, each chapter is less than 10 minutes uh, to read through as well, well according to Kindle, uh, but give it a read. Give it a read, you will enjoy it without a doubt. And of course, that is it for today. So make sure, if you have not already, make sure to subscribe to this channel as well. I put a few arrows to it as well, so that way you can easily see you know, where you have to hit the subscribe button as well. So make sure to hit subscribe as well, stay in tune and updated for that next video. Uh, and then of course, for the YouTube algorithm, make sure to like this video as well. If you didn't like this video yet, make sure to like it. It's that little thumbs up button that you see down there as well. So make sure to do that and of course, course, free money. Knowing more will help you sell more and knowing more is like literally having free money. So make sure to stay tuned in for our next video. We'll be up again really soon.